What is going on? Welcome on into the TC Trading Channel. Today we are going to be talking about the ultimate stochastic indicator. Yes, we're going to be talking about the Lux Algo ultimate stochastic and how you can utilize that in your own trading and investing. And actually, we're going to be talking about a potential really, really nice win rate that this indicator has been showing and really giving those who follow and use it over the past 15 or so months. And that's pretty incredible to think about. Okay. So first things first, what we want to do is we want to talk about how to get there, right? For some of us, what is a stochastic? How does it work? Let's just cover the basics so that you know what you're dealing with here. Now, the stochastic oscillator is a way to determine momentum, but essentially it's taking the closing price of security, a stock, an ETF, crypto, whatever you're trading, whatever you're looking at, futures, contracts, doesn't matter. And you're looking at that and you're comparing that to a, the range of its prices over a certain period of time. So you might think to yourself, okay, what the heck does that mean? Well, all it really means is it's a way to generate whether a stock could be oversold or overbought, okay? And they oscillate back and forth, very similar to the RSI. But what's the difference between the RSI and the stochastic? Well, the RSI is going to calculate things a little bit differently. They're going to measure the velocity of the price movements, okay? So like how fast something is going from high to low, okay? Where the stochastic is more so looking at a trading range and taking into account closing prices versus that recent range, okay? So they say, and I say they as in Investopedia says, the RSI is more useful during trending markets and the stochastic could be more useful in sideways or range bound markets. And I think over the past 12 months or so, you're going to see exactly why uh, that's the case. And uh, we can see some perfect examples of that right now in the S&P 500 to be specific. Okay. So that's the basics as to what the stochastic is and how it is similar to the RSI. But now let's pull it up over on TradingView. Okay. What I want to do first, we're looking at the S&P 500 here on our charts. Um, I have a couple lines marked out, but don't worry too much about that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go to the search bar and I'm just going to st start typing in stochastic. And all I'm going to do is, is click on the first option it gives me on TradingView. Now, this is not the ultimate stochastic from Lux Alga, which we're going to show you here in just one second, but we're going to kind of give you a general look at the stochastic and show you why the ultimate stochastic is better for someone who may be looking at this as like, I'm not really sure I want to use this. I want something that's simple, easy to visualize, easy to use for myself. Can I get that, right? Where is that without having to dive too deep in customizations of all this stuff? So you can always customize these indicators. And that's like the best part about literally trading view and using the platform. So um, if I pull up my indicator tab and I see in the bottom of my screen, we have a STOCH, that's stochastic. There's the gearbox, the settings icon and I can come in here and I can change it. These are currently the default settings, but here's what you have the ability to change. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward. There's not a ton inside of this that you want to change, but essentially what you're looking at is, is relatively oversold down here underneath the 20 overbought above the 80. And then what we have is these two colored lines. When those lines cross, that's when we can potentially indicate a change in momentum and maybe a reversal in momentum here. The problem is we just see a lot of crossing. There's it's it's not super consistent. And so you'll have to customize that. And you could certainly go ahead and do that to your likings. But if we get rid of this and we pull up the Lux Algo Premium Ultimate Stochastic Indicator, that is now showing at the bottom of my screen. It is night and day compared to what we just looked at. Okay, so they're going to do a lot of the hard work for you make it as super, super simple and easy to read. Now you, you can still customize this and we're going to go ahead and I've actually made a slight customization to this myself for this video, but now you've got something in front of you that I think is going to be much, much more visually appealing, a, and easy to interpret and easy to act on, which is the whole point of indicators because we can have a million indicators on our screens. But if we don't know what the heck we're doing and why we're using this one and, and, and what this is for and when to value this one versus that one, is it really going to be helpful? I don't know. Ask yourself that question. So 
Below this video, there'll be a link to Lux Algo if you want to grab access to the Ultimate Stochastic Indicator. It is one of their premium indicators. This will also be paired up with TradingView. So you can have a TradingView account. There's multiple versions. We have the premium version, but you don't need to. You can still use a free TradingView account uh, and get access to a couple of indicators on your charts. And that's how this works. So Lux Algo times TradingView that works super, super easy and seamlessly when you can upload them or have them loaded on your TradingView account and your watch list, your charts, everything you do here. So now that we've covered that. So now that I've got access, I'll go to my invite only scripts. It'll be under Lux Algo Oscillators Premium, okay? This will be the indicator name that we're looking for, okay? It is a premium indicator. So now that's pulling this guy on the bottom of my screen. If I go over here, pull my drop down menu on trading view, go to the bottom where it now pulls up the settings icon. Okay, don't worry about all this stuff. Go to inputs, keep it simple. I'm gonna go to where it says type ultimate stochastic. This, I believe the default is 17 on the length. Now, what does this mean? I have changed the default to 20. Why? Because it's gonna be looking at a bigger picture view. If I was to lower this down to 10, for example, look behind the charts. Now we've got a lot less clean oscillations. If I was to up this to 20, watch the oscillations now nice and smooth. And it really depends on the time frame because I'm looking at a one year, one day chart over the past, you know, year or so of the S and P 20 works for me, but this can be customized to you. And I would recommend that the time frame you're looking at from the time frame of your, you know, valuing a trade or valuating a trade, you make it so that this is as smooth and as useful as possible. You don't want it to be too smooth. For example, if I start going to 40, or something along those lines. Now you're not getting maybe the the oscillations that are, are, are large enough for you to take much action or to notice much. So 40 becomes too high. 30 could be an area that you can look at. And I personally like to use 20. That's just me, okay? I haven't touched anything else. Make sure dynamic overbought slash oversold levels is checked. If you don't, you'll lose those green and red lines and those little shadings. So that's these shadings right here. Now, why I say that is it's very actually, it's very useful in determining when to potentially enter a trade based off a recent change in momentum, okay? Going from oversold to overbought, et cetera. So I don't necessarily care too much about the actual value of the oscillator. All we need to really know is that as we start to get down towards a relative low, or we start to see deeper or brighter reds. And then we also start to see some green shading popping up here on the top end of our screen or the top end of the indicator. That's telling me we are getting close to a potential reversal in price. Okay. And the same thing goes on the other way. So we have this little red shading right here and we're going into the bright, bright greens. We start going from bright green and we start losing that, start going into red. That's the indication to me that we may have a trend reversal setting up and why it's so useful and so simple because look back at the S and P 500. Okay. Now, of course it's very easy and it's extremely easy to talk about things after the fact. Okay. And I don't want to really necessarily, I don't care to do that here. I'm more so looking because it's very easy. Someone could come on here and tell you, look at this indicator. It's the best thing ever, you know, use this because you know, when it does this, it works all the time. I, I don't really care to tell you that because there will be times where the indicator isn't maybe super clear, like right now when I'm filming this video. We've got a little bit of choppiness and it could easily, you know, if you can enter it, you could get stopped out. And if I did enter it, I actually would have gotten stopped out just this past two days ago. Okay, and I'll explain that in a second. But what I'm telling you is that if you were to essentially make a buy right here, right, you actually would have had a nice, you know, was out in the S&P, a nice two day push up into those highs then a consolidation. And then it started to roll back over. So if you were to initiate a short right in here, what you would have done is you would have shorted essentially right here and had a massive move down. If you would initiate a long in here, it's possible, depending upon the time frame, you would have gotten stopped out on this one day, but it's also possible that you could have recognized, uh Oh, something happened. And I could have got back in on the long side after that day. 
and then captured a very large move to the upside. Same thing right here. Could have captured a very nice move down. This would have entered you in right in here after this high. My stop loss is going to be above that recent high. And then boom, it would have double topped and then sent you down. Would have made money on that play. So the same thing goes for when it was here. We had that move in or that reversal on the ultimate stochastic, right? So this indicator is operating at a very, very high win rate right now based off the settings and based off the time horizon I'm using on the S&P 500, okay? Now, how would one go about using this? Because again, it's very easy to sit here and say, oh, it would have worked. But then when you think about like the actual nitty gritty, well, like what how, What do you do here? Uh, well, what, what do you do here? Well, what do, you, what do you do here? How do you play it? How do you, how do you enter your positions and stop losses? Well, a way to go about it is build a systematic approach. And for me, a potential systematic approach could be along the lines of, okay, when we have a reversal from red to green or from green to red, let's use this right here as our example, okay? Then what I'm going to go ahead and do, because that reversal is not going to be the day we have a high, most likely. So I'm going to find that day, okay? So that day happens to be right here. Maybe even I got in right here, but technically the signal alerts alerted me right here, okay? Either way, let's split the difference and say that I entered a position right in here. What I am then going to do is I'm going to look back to the left and find the recent relative high or relative low. If I'm buying a dip or if I'm shorting a high, I'm going to find the recent relative high or low, and I'm going to initiate a position from where it is right now. When I get the alert, when that signal gives me the signal, when, when the indicator gives me the signal, and I'm going to go put my stop loss over the recent relative high. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a two to one risk reward ratio. Okay. So that's this. You would now see that this trade would have worked very, very nice because we never actually, from where I entered that little blue dot, I drew that right there. We never actually came up here to stop me out. And we ended up hitting a two to one risk reward within about two weeks, okay, on this swing trade, okay? And technically speaking, if you wanna get you know super specific, we would have hit at the low about a, what is that? A six to one risk reward. Pretty incredible if you ask me. Now, here's how one may go about something along these lines, okay? You may look for a rough two to one, but you don't need that. In my head, let's say I buy a position all at once right here, a short position. If I get stopped out, the entire position will go and exit at my stop point. But then what I might do is as the position moves one to one in my direction, so one to one risk reward, so it moves the same amount that I was willing to risk, I might take one fifth or I might take one third. One third might make it easier to visualize. I might take one third of my position off. We get to two to one risk reward. I'm gonna take an additional third of my position off. Let's say I bought, I, I shorted three shares of the S&P or SPY or whatever. I cover one share at a one to one risk reward. I cover the second share at a two to one. And then I might cover the third share at a three to one, or I might just put a trailing stop loss on it and let that thing go. If it wants to go four five, six to one, boom. Okay, that's one systematic approach to trading this versus trying to say, ah, you know, I'm not sure. And then when all of a sudden, you know, price starts to come back against you, it goes your way nicely. Then it comes back against you and you panic sell out of it because it didn't hit your target, but then you panic sell. And then you end up taking, you know, a 0.5 to one risk reward. Now you don't have a systematic approach. Okay. So I encourage you to build a systematic approach. And that was an example. So maybe at that point in time, after I have taken off my first third and my second third, I automatically will put my stop loss at the break even point, which would have been right here. And then just let things ride from there and take profits at a four to one or a three to one, you know, something along those lines. That's, that might be what I do to always preserve the size of my green trade. And now I always know if I operate this way with this systematic approach and I am right, six out of 10 times with this indicator, I will have a green and I will have a profitable trading strategy for myself in the long run. And that's the power of the ultimate stochastic. And that's the power of the Lux Algo indicators because it makes it super easy for you to visualize 
act and then build a trading plan off of, okay? Hopefully that makes some sense. Again, the links will be down below to TradingView, the platform that we use to do all of our charting and analysis and essentially our trade planning and Lux Algo, where you can load Lux Algo indicators on TradingView just like that. Those two links will be in the video description box down below. Thanks so much for watching. Any questions, leave them in the comment section and we'll be happy to answer those there or in a future video. Make sure you are subscribed, hit that thumbs up. Happy trading.